Hi, everybody. My name is Marissa, and I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics with a minor in statistics. In today's lesson, I will discuss why chi-squared goodness of fit tests are used, as well as how to conduct a five-step hypothesis test for a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Let's imagine that we are the dean of a small community college that has four programs, nursing, computer science, business, and healthcare administration. There are a total of 1,000 students that attend the college, and we want to know whether or not each program has an equal number of students in order to determine how much for the school's budget to spend on each program. In order to achieve this goal, we will conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test. A chi-square goodness of fit test is used to test if the categories of a categorical variable follow a certain distribution. Before we conduct our goodness of fit test, we must first determine our expected counts and our degrees of freedom. The expected counts of a chi-square goodness of fit test are exactly what they sound like, the counts that we would expect for each category. Sometimes these numbers are given to us, and sometimes we have to calculate them. In our community college example, we would expect that all programs should have an equal number of students. Because there are 1,000 students in four programs, we would expect that there are 250 students in each program, or 25% per program. We got this result by simply dividing 1,000 by four. The number of groups is denoted by K in a goodness of fit test. We now need to determine our degrees of freedom. In a chi-square test, the degrees of freedom are calculated by subtracting one from the number of groups. In our community college example, we would have three degrees of freedom since we have four programs and four minus one is three. Now that we know our expected counts and degrees of freedom, it is time to set up our null and alternative hypotheses. Our null hypothesis states that all population proportions are equal. In this example, the null hypothesis would be denoted P1 equals P2 equals P3 equals P4. In this case, we assume that the proportion of students in each program are equal. In words, the null hypothesis for our community college example would be, the proportion of students in four community college programs are equal. For a chi-square goodness of fit test, our alternative hypothesis is only in the form of words and is stated as, not all proportions are equal. In this case, it would be, not all programs have an equal proportion of students. It is now time to calculate our test statistic by using the formula chi squared equals the sum of the observed value minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. If the count of students is 350 for nursing, 250 for computer science, 250 for business, and 150 for healthcare administration, we get a chi-square test statistic of 80. Once we obtain our test statistic, we must compare it to our critical value. In order to find our critical value, we will use a chi-square table. The rows in the chi-square table represent the degrees of freedom, and our columns represent our alpha level. Alpha represents the probability of rejecting our null hypothesis if it is true. Alpha is always assumed to be 0 0.05 unless specified otherwise. Chi-square goodness of fit tests are right-tailed, and we obtain the value of a right-tailed critical value by calculating the value of one minus alpha. Using the correct degrees of freedom in alpha, we obtain a right-tailed critical value of 7.815. Note that these tests are always right-tailed because in the calculation of a test statistic, we square our values, making it impossible to obtain negative values. The p-value approach can also be used but it is outside the scope of this lesson. If the value of our test statistic is greater than our right-tail critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. Our test statistic of 80 is far greater than the critical value of 7.815, so we reject the null hypothesis. Because we rejected the null hypothesis, we would phrase our conclusion as, reject the null hypothesis. We can conclude that the proportion of students in each of the four programs are not equal. If we failed to reject the null hypothesis, we would say, fail to reject the null hypothesis. 
there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the proportion of students in each of the four programs are unequal. A mistake that some students make is accidentally dividing by the observed value rather than the expected when using the formula for a chi-square test statistic. This mistake can be avoided by memorizing the formula for a chi-square goodness of fit test statistic. Additionally, students should always remember that chi-square tests are right-tailed, although this can be confusing because the alternative hypothesis contains the words not equal. Great job, everyone. Today we learned about why we use goodness of fit tests. We also learned how to conduct a five-step goodness of fit test. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to check out other videos about statistics lessons and applications here on Chegg. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.